Hey there, thank you for tuning into SimTech channel in this tutorial on short circuit analysis using Dig Silent. In this tutorial tree, we basically going to solve this tutorial tree where we were basically tasked, okay, to solve the short circuit at point F1 and point F2. Now, this particular tutorial is already solved on my channel manually using the per unit system to basically compute the fault here. Okay, so the task is very simple. You need to first convert the network into a per unit diagram. Once you have it into a per unit diagram, then you can calculate the total impedance from your power station leading up to where the fault is. So you do it from generator one and generator two leading to where the fault is located. And that way you can find the short circuit current at a particular point. And once you get the short circuit current, you can also calculate the short circuit MVA right now, but in this series of tutorial, we basically trying to compare the manual calculation, how quickly you can actually achieve the same thing using Dig silent power factory. Great. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and model this particular network into Dig silent power factory. So the network is very simple. There is generator one and generator two that are basically connected in parallel here via this T1 and T2 transformer. And we've got the bus bar here and on the bus bar, there is a line with the reactance of two ohm that is connected to it. So what you're going to see here, basically, we're going to have a one bus bar here at the generator, another bus bar on generator two, then one bus bar where the two generators are joined together and another bus bar at the end of the line here. So our fault will be located here at this bus bar and at this bus bar on generator two. So to achieve this simple network, it's very simple. We're going to grab the first bus bar here. That will be for generator one. We're going to place him right there. So let's go ahead and quickly rename this bus bar. So the first one is going to be bus bar one. So we're just going to rename this as BB one. And we move to the second one. So that's going to be bus bar two. named accordingly so the first thing to do again here is to bring in the generator so let's go ahead and fetch the synchronous machine here okay so we're going to place it right here and connect it on the first bus bar and we can choose any cubic that we want here cubic one is good for us and we need the second generator here and we're also going to connect him on the first cubic right there Great, so we don't need any more generator. We can cancel that. And let's just bring this generator down there so we can see him. He must not be hidden there. We need to see how much power can be pulled out of this generator. Now, the second thing to do here is to bring in the transformers. Okay, let us me just expand this bus bar quickly here. Okay, that is going to simplify things for us. Okay, then we can bring in the two winding transformer. And we're gonna connect the transformer, the first connection on cubic two. And the second connection is going to be right here. We can choose any cubic we want on this particular bus bar three. Let's go ahead, cubic three. Then the second transformer, we're going to connect it here on cubic two as well. And the last connection here will be on cubic two. Great. So this is all we need to do in terms of connecting the two transformers so we can exit that point. Great. Now the last connection on our diagram here is the line. So let's go ahead and bring the line and we can place a line right here on the center of that bus bar and connect it on cubic three. Then we can connect it to the last bus bar four here and we can choose any cubic that is available to us here. Cubic one. Great. Okay, so that's basically all we need here in terms of the connection. But now if you run this, it's obviously it's not going to work because you need to compute this by entering all the variables, okay, that you basically need. And those variables are going to be coming from these uh, circuit diagram that we've got here and some of which are also going to be coming from the per unit calculations because you need to get the new per unit impedance of the generator 
of the transformer and also the reactancy of the line is already 2 ohm so that is good for us we can just enter it as is but we need a per unit value for g1 g2 t1 and t2 to be entered in this network here great now before we do that please if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to simtech channel that would be highly appreciated and i thank you so much for that great so the first information we're going to enter here will be for generator one so let's go ahead and and just rename this quickly here so that it's we can avoid making mistakes so that is g1 and this one here we're going to just rename it as g2 great just like that okay now the parameters for generator one we already know what they are based on our schematic diagram here we can see that it's a 30 mva generator and the per unit value was already calculated on the tutorial so we are only going to enter that value while solving this generator now we know that the transformer here okay that the generator is connected is an 11 kilovolt and 33 kilovolt transformer so which means the generator here is feeding a voltage of 11 kilovolt so that is easy for us we can just come here and create a new type okay and we're going to enter the apparent power here to be 30 mva the capacity of the generator the voltage is 11 kilovolt but now because when solving uh, the per unit we use 30 mva throughout the calculation for the generator here to get basically the new per unit now we have to pass the power factor here to be one because if we do not pass a power factor to be one basically what it will mean is here on the load flow calculation the maximum power that the generator will deliver will depend on the power factor as you can see it's 30 megawatt but if we leave a power factor as uh, 0 uh 85 or 08 right so that basically going to affect the active power that is going to be flowing out of the generator and that will also affect our calculation so so we're going to leave it as a power factor of one and here also we leave the generator type as a pq with the power factor control great now we can move to the next generator so the process is basically the same thing we're going to create a new type here and we're gonna enter our information here so let's just check quickly the information for generator 2 it's a 25 right no it's a 20 mva right so the per unit value was also computed already so let's first enter the basic data here it is a 20 mva generator and it's 11 kilovolt and we're going to also put a power factor of one now the next data is the load flow information for generator 2 and that was already computed on the tutorial to be 0 comma 15 so we're just going to change that reactance here the per unit value to be 0 comma 15 and we can say okay and okay great now we need to also change that information here on generator 1 okay so that's the load flow data here that was also calculated to be 0 comma 2 then we can say okay and okay great now we're making good progress here before we can enter the transformer data let's go ahead and just change the voltage on the bus bar otherwise if we don't do that we're going to get a problem so the nominal voltage on the bus bar must be 11 kilovolt okay so that's a voltage coming from the generator and we're gonna say yes and we're going to change the second one as well nominal voltage to also be 11 kilovolt line to line great okay now we can go ahead now do our transformer so the first transformer so that is going to be t1 here on generator one let's go ahead and double click on the transformer and we're going to create a new type and when the windows data popped up so we need to first change the rating here to 40 mva the high voltage side is 33 kilovolt the low voltage side is 11 kilovolt the per unit calculated value is 0 comma 02 and we're going to change here also 0 comma 02 for the zero sequence impedance and we're gonna say okay great and we're gonna say okay oops inconsistent data violated condition so what's going on here 
voltage at pass by terminal hv is lower than low voltage terminal okay so what's going on here if we look at the high voltage side grid bb12 that's a high voltage side but bb1 is this one here that's actually the low voltage side so this transformer need to swap so to solve that we basically can reset here and also reset here then you can say okay then the connection will be lost and we need to reconnect the element again here connect element and we can choose that and we can connect to two cubic two day then the next connection here on bus bar three we can go to cubic one okay now after these have been done we can double click on the transformer again and this time around if you see the high voltage side is on bb3 which is this bus bar where there is a 33 kilovolt and the low voltage side is on bb1 so we are good to go and when we double click on this bus bar since we haven't changed it it's still a default 132 kilovolt so let's go ahead and change it to 33 kilo, uh, kilovolt and okay great and this bus bar is already at 11 kilovolt line to line so we can move to the next transformer that is t2 and we also gonna create a new type and when the window popped up so the transformer t2 the variable or the data for transformer t2 is a 25 and 11 kilovolt okay and the per unit calculated value for transformer 2 is 0 0,04 you can check it on the tutorial great so we can change here to be 25 mva 33 and 11 kilovolt okay and okay we might get another error here also okay great no problem we can reset it because we basically using the transformer in a flopped way so we could have just repositioned it but this is also okay it doesn't change much we can just reconnect our element here and the problem will be solved okay so cubic two and we can go to cubic number two as well here great so we basically done with the connections or the variables for the transformers so our bus battery here is already 33 kilovolts so we're good to go so the next thing is only the line okay and bus bar 2 now the line here is very simple we're just going to create a new line type here okay and the rating of the line is a 33 kilovolt okay because it is connected on a 33 kilovolt side of the transformer and the line so great so then the rating of the cable one kilo amp is fine we can change it to overhead line now the reactance is two ohm and the resistance is zero great so that is fine we can say okay so that's all we have for line information so let's go ahead and click on the bus bar number four and we're just going to change this to basically 33 kilovolt and okay and okay great so congratulations you basically model you just completed the modeling of this uh, network here into dig silent great now let's go ahead and compute the short circuit analysis with dig silent here so we can compare the result with what we obtained during the manual calculation great so f1 f1 calculation gave us a value of about 11 kilo amps uh, short circuit current with an MVA fault of 210 megavolt ampere and F2 we got about 2.5 kilo amps of short circuit current and 144 megavolt ampere of short circuit MVA now you can confirm that value by watching this tutorial uh, tutorial 3 on the fault current calculation playlist okay so now let's go ahead and first compute fault 1 that is on bus bar uh bus part two here on g2 and then we're going to finish with the one on f2 here on bus bar four okay so we're going to just click on the bus bar and calculate the short circuit okay uh when the windows popped up here everything is already as we want it to be and we can just execute and when the result return this is our result 
and we can see that here we're getting a short circuit MV of 196 with 10 point almost 10.3 kilo amps of current so within margins of error now remember the data that we are entering here there's some other information that we basically left them as is and if we really want to be very close to the manual calculation we have to get to the bottom of every single detail of all these variables here okay so now let's go ahead and run the second one that is now on bus bar 4 and we know that that f2 value we got a uh, mv of 144 and let's see what we're going to get here okay we're getting 148.9 so about four mega volt ampere in excess of uh, marginal errors and the current is 2.6 okay so that's about uh, 0.1 kilo amps of current different so you can see that the dig silent computation is not too far off from the manual calculations so that is it guys for for this tutorial if you find it useful indeed please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel so so stay tuned for more tutorial of this nature until next time cheers